Well, first we'd like to say thanks to the, the Peach Bowl Committee and, and the city of Atlanta. It, it, this is uh, obviously the history of this bowl game. Um, and the, the folks that cover Auburn understand this. This is 38 years, so I've been here before. Uh, I actually coached in this game when it was in the old Braves Fulton County Stadium. So uh, it's, it's, it, the history of this bowl is, is, is special. Uh, we're excited about being here, of course, with the opponent we have, the undefeated uh, uh, Central Florida team that is a very, very good football team. We're excited about the opportunity to have uh, to uh, to go and compete against a great football team. All right, thanks, Coach. Trey, uh, for your opening statement, uh, I would love to get your thoughts on the MLK visit uh, last night, what that experience was like for you. Oh, man, it was, a, it was very inspirational. You know, it was you know crazy just learning from it back in grade school, you know, middle school, high school, things like that. And just reading from it, you know, from a book and everything, having teachers teach about it. But it's very different to actually hear the, the true experience of people who actually dealt with it, who actually put up with it and actually made a change in this world. So, you know, that, that admired a lot of us and it made us look into ourselves to see how can we make a difference in our community, you know, by playing football or you know, even how we treat people on a daily basis. Yep. Well said. Thanks for that. Okay, we'll go ahead and open it up for questions. Raise your hand. We'll get you a microphone. All right, somebody's got to be first. Let's go, guys. All right, over here on the left, third row, please. Yeah, uh, for Coach Steele, uh, obviously you've coached in the state of Florida. You know the type of talent and speed that's in the state of Florida. Are, are you surprised that, that UCF has been able to – to, to rise like it has, uh, being a non-Power 5 team? Uh, no, not at all. I mean, the, the, the high school talent in the state of Florida, the high school coaching, uh, the availability to athletes uh, in terms of, uh, particularly in the skilled area, uh, the, the defensive backs, wide receivers, running backs, uh, a lot of speed in the state. So uh, not at all. And I mean, you know, Coach O'Leary did a great job, went to the Fiesta Bowl. Uh, and so when, when Scott came in, everybody knew there was talent at Central Florida. And so uh, he's put, uh, put a good staff together, and, and the product has uh, is, is come to fruition in a big way. So, no, not surprised at all. All right, where are we going next, guys? All right, right here in the middle, fourth row. Christian Brewing, WFTV, Coach Steele. What are your thoughts just on Mackenzie Milton and when you watch the film, what is it that he does that has led to his success this season? Well, obviously, there's, there's guys that, that play the game in terms of the, the system. Sorry they're, about they're, that. Don't know what happened there. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Coach. Go ahead. I know him. He didn't know where the on and off switch is, so <laughs> just bear with him. Uh, the uh, he's very he's a guy that uh, has ability because of his his athleticism and just the the moxie that he has in the way he plays the game to keep it and extend plays and and kind of make the second half of a play. Uh, he he can turn plays in that you look like it is stopped. Uh, and, and into the second half of the play kind of, uh, and I say this in, in, in a positive way, not a negative way, almost like you used to play games back in the, in the backyard with kids and running around in, in a touch football game uh, where you could just run, run around and make plays. He's one of those guys that if you play touch football in the, in the backyard, which I don't know if kids do that. Y'all do still do yeah, that? We, still. we used to do that. Uh, <laughs> he's one of those guys that uh, at the end of the day, he's the guy that nobody can – get on the ground, uh, is always making plays. Trey, how are you at Backyard Touch Football? Uh, I ain't that fast, so I just, <laughs> I just let everybody else run the ball. I just try to make all the tackles. All right, keep working hard, buddy. We'll get you there. <laughs> all right, where, where are we going next, guys? Okay, back here in the second row here, Josh. Josh Payne from AL.com. Coach, you, you mentioned the speed uh, that, that Central Florida has. They've scored a ton of points. How do you, how do you go about neutralizing their speed? Well, I mean, it, the game's about us. 
it, it, obviously, everybody we played had 11 guys on the field. They lined up in a formation. We had motions and shifts, and the field's the same width, same length every game. It's about our execution, our focus, uh, and, and, and doing the things that, that we're required to do. Uh, be where you're supposed to be. We're not going to ask anybody. There's no defense we have where we're going to ask guys to take two gaps. We're not going to ask guys to cover two men. Uh, we're not going to ask guys to be responsible for two zones. Uh, so just do your job and, and execute. Uh, and so uh, that's, that's really what it boils down to. It, it's about us. All right, next question, raise your hand. We'll get you a microphone, please. Okay, right over here, fourth row again. Christian Brewery, WFTV. Trey, for you, this is the UCF team doesn't give up a lot of sacks. You guys are good at sacking the quarterback. Uh, what is shown up on film, and how do you plan to attack their offensive line? Uh, I mean, like Coach Steele said, I mean, it's all about us and how we execute. You know, Coach Steele going to put us in the right position, and it's just our job to do our job. You know, um, we had a lot of success, like you, like you said, with the D-line. We have a great de defense alignment. And we depend on them every play, and they always do their job, and we just hit to back them up. Okay, we're going to go over here, uh, third row, far left. Yeah, for Trey, uh, obviously you guys have seen the comments made by Adrian Killens about the SEC hasn't seen the speed that UCF has. Um, how taken aback were you with, with those comments, and was that maybe something to wake you guys up after losing in the uh, SEC championship game? Oh, no, not really. Uh, we don't really pay attention to anything said in the media. You know, we just focus on preparation, you know, doing our job. And, I mean, we know what we have. We know what we can do. So um, we're just going to prepare for the game. And during it, like I said, Coach still going to put us in the right position and we're going to make the play. All right, sure, absolutely. Go ahead. For Coach Steele, he, he says they don't pay attention to it, but you coaches have a way of uh, reminding – they're Player. coachable. They're well. They're coachable. <laughs> is that something you would use in a, in a bulletin board type setting? No. You guys still have bulletin boards? No, we're, we're uh, no, we don't. Uh, <laughs> we, we we text them and uh, <laughs> I actually have somebody to do it for me, but that's another story. Uh, no, it, it's in, in this day and age with social media, and, and we're so equipped. I mean, there's a lot of things out there about everything. Uh, some of it you don't even know if it's true or not. Uh, and so we're conditioned now. The whole process is built to focus on our job, our responsibility, what we control, and the external factors, the distractions, whatever they may be. Uh, we spend a lot of time on making sure that that does not get into the meeting room, the practice field, the locker room. Uh, and so it's not, it's not really that hard anymore in terms of uh, trying to keep everybody focused that way. They, they're, they're pretty coachable that way. All right, next question. All right, right here in the front row, far right, Coach. This, this is uh, Jason Caldwell inside the Auburn Tigers for Trey. Um, we hear all the time, Coach Steele talks about it all the time, about focusing on yourself. How much has that helped um, the last couple of years knowing that, hey, it's just about what you guys do and, and kind of handling what you can control? Uh, when you try to put too much focus on the other team or any opponent you're playing, you know, you don't really uh, get the opportunity to do your, do your job the best way you can. So as soon as Coach Steele got here, that's the first thing he put in, like focus on yourselves, like focus on your technique, your job, and just the defense in general, like everybody's execution, and you'll be fine. If you start – Focusing on what your opponent doing, then uh, you'll get out your gap or your technique won't be right and things like that. So, you know, he emphasized that every day. Just do your job and focus on yourself and we'll be all right. <clears throat> okay, we're going to go all the way back here in the back. Christina Chambers, WBRC in Birmingham. Coach, you uh, say you have someone text the players. Are you tech savvy? <laughs> uh, I am. Uh... But uh, I wouldn't say compared to Trey, no, <laughs> I'm not. I, I can get the message across if I need to. Uh, but, uh, yes, I, I just normally hand it. I got a little guy that's been with me at a couple of stops. And I just hand it to him sitting beside me and say, hey, text Trey and tell him this. So, but I can do it if I need to. 
don't I, I, I don't really want to talk about that because if my wife figures out that I'm tech savvy, then she'll start texting me and we won't go there. <laughs> uh, she's not going to hear it from us, Coach, I promise. All right, next question. Raise your hand. We'll get you a microphone. Okay, back here, fourth row middle. Christian Brewery for Coach Steele. Uh, there was – Coach Frost talked about the size differential in running backs. Obviously, you guys see carry on Johnson in practice. What stands out other than, hey, these guys are a little smaller than what you guys see on a daily basis, speed-wise, and with the offense that UCF runs? Well, obviously, you know, the spread offense is everywhere now. We see it on the practice the practice field. There, there's little nuances. Uh, this is obviously is more the Chip Kelly, Oregon style, but uh, there's a lot of similarities in that. In terms of the players, um, they're, they're, they come in all shapes and sizes. I mean, it, 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 in the course of a year, you're going to see every kind of running back from small, quick to big, powerful. And so uh, it, it's, it's built. There's certain things that make it a little more difficult with different guys. Uh, and obviously we're well, well aware of that, uh, the quickness and, and the ability to, to make, make people miss in, in a very close area. But it's, it's not, it still comes back to, to applying technique uh, and being responsible and accountable to your job. Uh, you, you, can't, you can't just get into defending one guy. Uh, there, there's a lot, a lot of space out there. All right, time for a few more. Where are we going next? Okay, second row right here. Adrian? Uh, this is Adrian Beecher with skyboat.com for Coach. You guys were one game, one win away from playing in the college football playoff semifinal. Has there been any let up at all in the team from being disappointed and not getting that opportunity? And, and how hard is it to make that transition when you have that right in your sights to then transition into getting focused to play for a big marquee game like the Peach Bowl? Well, I, I think externally, uh, and I want to get into a, a, a lecture about the philosophy on that, but you know, the playoffs has changed the external mentality. So the fans, maybe the media, I don't know that, you have to speak for yourself. All the shift goes, if you don't make the final four, then it's a bad year, or you didn't accomplish what you, and that's not, that's not the way it's built internally. Uh, it, it's, it's one game at a time, one play at a time, play like a champion, be the best you can be on the next play. Uh, if the game doesn't work out, then you go the next week and do it again. Uh, there's a lot of things this team can accomplish. Uh, I mean, all the way, I could give you a litany of, them, uh, of, a, of a list of, of things. For an example, we have the opportunity to win 11 games. That'll be the seventh time in the history of the school. Uh, these guys have an opportunity to, 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 I think, in the history of college football, uh, we have an opportunity to beat three 9-0 and or better teams in the same year. I don't think that's ever been done. Uh, and so there's a lot of positives. But what it really boils down to is when you're dealing with guys that are highly competitive and are committed to excellence and committed to the process of being the best they can be, uh, every every play, the work ethic and the challenge of being the best you can be internally is controlled by that. Not what bowl game you're in, or you're in the playoffs, you didn't win the SEC championship. That's not how it's built. And so it's a drastic difference from what is viewed externally and what happens internally. All right. Back over here, third row far left. Yeah, Coach, did you know Scott Frost when you coached at Nebraska? And um, what did you learn under Tom Osborne at Nebraska? Uh, I did know Scott. Uh, Scott, we recruited Scott when I was there. Uh, we had, uh, I think Tommy was the quarterback at that time, Frazier, and he was a young quarterback. Scott went to Stanford, was there, I think, one year, and, and then came back home. Scott's dad, mom, both coaches in Nebraska. So, yes, I, I did know him, and then when he came back, I was still there. So, uh, yes, I did know him. Uh, Coach Osborne, we don't have enough time. It's more of a book than a press conference on what you learn from Coach Osborne. 
Uh, there was not a day that went by that you didn't didn't uh, learn something from Coach. Uh, un unbelievable man, uh, great teacher. But I think probably the biggest thing was he had an uncanny uh, ability to be to make every person in the room every day, every time he saw you, feel like you were the most important person in the world. And that brings the best out of people. Uh, a very uplifting guy.